Located 2,200 meters above sea level is where you'll find one of the largest metropolitan cities in the world, Mexico City. With 22 million inhabitants, it has become the biggest Spanish-speaking city in the world. It's incredibly dense, hectic, overwhelming, and loud, but I had a great time. Welcome to a new video from Mexico City, guys. We are right now up in an air balloon over the pyramids here in Mexico City. And this is such a big bucket list experience. This is actually something I've been wanting to do for years. And I'm gonna tell you more about how we booked this experience when we get back down. The balloons are so much bigger in person and this is definitely something you should add to your list if you're coming to Mexico. In this video, guys, I'm gonna show you all the best things to do in Mexico City. And of course, we are starting if you're new here, my name is Camilla and I make travel series here on my YouTube channel. I'm so happy to be back in Mexico and I can't believe it's taken me 30 years and 30 countries before I made my way to Mexico City. With the number of tacos I've been eating in my 30 years, I'm ashamed I haven't visited this city before now. My friend Martin and I traveled around Mexico for one month and Mexico City was our last stop. We only had two days together in the capital before she flew home to New York and my solo adventure began. In today's video, I am going to share with you some of the best things you can do here in Mexico City. We're gonna go on some crazy balloon adventure. We're gonna go to good restaurants, rooftops. We're gonna go shopping. We're gonna do a lot of different things but I'm really excited to share this new video with you and I hope you enjoyed the last videos and if you haven't seen them, you can watch them right up here. Okay guys, the first experience that you have to do if you are in Mexico City is to book an experience to go on a hot air balloon. Like, it's so insane and the balloons are so much bigger in real life than you think. We came here for sunrise and it was an incredible cool experience. It was really cold. Now I'm actually able to wear a t-shirt, but earlier today everyone was wearing bubbly jackets. Today's video is in collaboration with Get Your Guide. You've probably heard of them if you've been traveling and looking for things to do worldwide. They have over 60,000 curated experiences. They actually collaborate with local guides, so the experience we booked today with a hot air balloon, it's like a local company here in Mexico City. It's super easy to book it. Like I just went online, searched for the dates I wanted, and then it showed up hot air balloon, cooking classes, or mezcal tour. There's so many things to choose from. If you have like any problems receiving your confirmation or your ticket to any of the museums you're going to or a tour like this, they have 24 seven support. And I actually been talking to them on WhatsApp and they reply like within a few minutes. So that's pretty cool. And I'm gonna show you right now how we started our day, how we got picked up because yeah, we got picked up at our hotel as well. That was part of the experience. And overall, it was so cool, and I'm excited to show you. Let's go. Good. Tired. Are you <laughs> super ready. We are getting ready to go up in the balloons, but one thing to know if you're gonna go on this experience, it is freezing. They don't have any jacket rental, so bring warm clothes and then you're probably gonna have an even better time than we are right now. Unfortunately, it was a hazy morning, so the sun didn't show up until later. But that didn't make this experience any less special. We got to admire the Pyramid of the Sun, which is believed to have been constructed about 200 AD. The balloons are so much bigger in person, and this is definitely something you should add to your list if you're coming to Mexico. We are about to land. This flight took around one hour, and it's actually incredible. Anyway, we got to see the pyramids and I'll tell you more about it when we get back down.
time flew by, literally, and after an hour in the sky, it was time to land. We had a celebratory toast and a gratitude prayer after we landed safely, followed by a cozy breakfast. So if you book this experience, make sure you bring hot clothes, like long pants, beanies, everything, and your shoes. And most people my age can't bend and touch their toes. <laughs> I can show you here. Make sure you wear like maybe black shoes or something. You will get dirty, but it's worth it. Number two on my list is always the most important part of traveling, enjoying the local food scene. With 22 million people who need to eat every day, you can only imagine how massive the food scene here is. There are thousands of different street vendors in every corner, and the ones with the longest lines are usually the best ones. I ate so much good food there, but these were some of my favorites. Number one is Plantasia. We just got to Plantasia, and this is an Asian vegan restaurant here in Mexico City. And now we're getting drinks that are infused with, I think, CBD. We're not sure. Okay. Look at this drink, and then Mari got a color changer drink with a little flower. Okay, we have so much food. This is just a starter. I ordered a ramen soup. We got wonton. We got gyoza. Look at this. They don't have alcohol drinks here, but they do infuse them with CBD. I'll show you on the menu. I'm very excited. Let's see. Preferred inside, you feel the energy of all the customers and the clientele. It's really cool, it's super diverse, old, young, hip. Everyone was there, but everyone enjoyed the good food. <laughs> My food, baby, it's like six months. <laughs> six months, I think. This is the best food experience we've had, maybe in all of Mexico. The second place I enjoyed was this charming place called Forever. It's the perfect lunch spot, but you can also have cozy dinners here. They have seating available outside and inside, and the staff was really friendly and made me feel super welcomed. The third place you have to check out is La Pataya Vegana. Just got three more tacos. I got one with cauliflower, I got one with tofu and one with mushroom, I think. And the kombucha here is really good. The last place I wanted to include was Mora Mora. This place was not as charming as the other places, but the food was really good. We are currently on the phone with my sister. Hola! <laughs> But I just got the most amazing avocado toast and a side smoothie. And look at this beautiful, beautiful beet on it. This avocado toast is really good and I was craving something healthy. This was definitely the right spot. It's located in Condesa next to tons of other good restaurants. One of the top things you have to do when you come here to Mexico City is to visit the Frida Kahlo Museum. I am here today together with Get Your Guide and I booked my ticket online on Get Your Guide. It was around $30 for one ticket. It is totally worth it. It's way bigger than I thought it would be and it's so beautiful and it's incredible to walk in the footsteps of Frida, see where she lived, see where she slept, see where her and her husband Diego Riviera stayed. But yeah, overall, just an incredible experience that I highly recommend. And at the end of this tour, you have this gift shop that you can go to and buy some of the paintings and kitchen magnets and stuff like that. I bought one of Frida and her parrots, and even though the original sold for 130 million, the one I got was around $15, but still totally worth having a little memory from this trip. I got a big gift bag with stuff. If you're into history and art, then you should definitely make your way here. 
Keep in mind, you probably have to wait a while outside, even if you bought a ticket in advance. I waited for probably 15 minutes. And there are a lot of people in this city. Okay, guys, one of the things you have to do here in Mexico City to get to know the city better is to do a walking tour. There are tons of Airbnb and Get Your Guide. The tour we have been going for is the free walking tour, but you do, of course, always give a tip. It's a cool way to get to know the city, and you get to see a lot of places that I'm going to show you right now. Mexico City is such an overwhelming city, and I'm coming from New York. It's super loud with thousands of people everywhere and it can be quite confusing to know what to do and where to go. So I love doing walking tours. You immediately get a broader understanding of the city's structure and expert guidance on the best places to see. This tour was a bit long. It lasted for three hours, but we got to see a lot and it's also included two stops for food. If you want a more private feeling and a shorter tour, you can also book a private tour with Get Your Guide. Number 5 on the list might not be everyone's choice, but it guarantees good memories for life. Another thing you can do here in Mexico City that's not like traditional touristy thing to do, it's a little different and I highly recommend it to you create some great memories, is to hire a local photographer. My friend Mariola, I'm gonna introduce you to her in a second. She will take your photo and you will go to like some touristy places or wherever you want and you can just have a photographer follow you for the day or for two hours or however long you want. There's so many places to take good photos in this city. So it's cool to have a local. I'm gonna introduce her to you right now. Cheers. Hola, I'm Mariola Soberon. I'm a local photographer in Mexico City and I would love to take some pictures. Thank you, Mariola. Thank you. <laughs> It's a great way to see the city, meet a local, and have someone help you capture you in the beautiful surroundings. We went to Monumento a la Revolución, which is the highest triumphal arch in the world, beating the arch in Paris. The monument has a great observation deck on top, giving you incredible views over Mexico City. Number six is a fun one. Check out one of the many rooftop bars Mexico City has to offer. There is an unmatched vibe in this city and the rooftop bars are no exception. Mexico City is one of the most liberal cities in Latin America and one way to see this is through its art, fashion and relationships. I love the crowd at all the bars and rooftops we went to. One of my favorite rooftops was Supra. The staff there was so accommodating, you definitely need to book a reservation if you're headed there. I pulled a YouTuber card so they got us a table even though it was full. Another rooftop I went to was called Toledo and again the crowd was such a beautiful mix of people but you definitely need to book a reservation here as well if you want a table. So yeah, do not sleep on the Mexico City nightlife scene. It's vibrant, sexy and way more affordable than a night out in New York City. Moving on to number 7 on the list. If you want the perfect activity on a rainy day here in Mexico City, I highly recommend to visit Franz Meyer's museum here in Mexico City. The good thing about the museum is that you can be inside. So to enter this museum, it's around four dollars per person and we booked our tickets on get your guide we booked it 30 minutes before we got here we booked it in an uber on our way over and now we're here and it closed at 5 p.m make sure you have a lot of time because there's a lot to see here and i'm going to show you right now but from what we heard in the research we've been doing it looks like a great collection right now also have a photography collection from a photojournalist that's there i'm super interested in photography so i'm excited to see that the topic is a little heavy i'm going to show you and now we're going to go inside so we don't get rained on Franz Meyer, he was actually from Germany, but he lived most of his life here in Mexico. 
He was a German Mexican financier. He was an art collector. He was a photographer. When he died, he donated his whole collection to the people and the city of Mexico. The cool part is there is no specific era in the different art collections. It's basically just everything he collected that he loved art. And also all his photography is really cool. He took photos from all over the world. I wish we had more time. We came right before closing. There's a security guard right behind me now wanting to kick me out. Okay, gracias. <laughs> Number 8 on the list might not be for everyone, but even if you're not into it, I urge you to check out the vintage stores in Mexico City. I always roam around each city I travel to searching for the best vintage stores. And holy f**k, did Mexico surpass my expectations. All the stores are like little museums and everything is so well curated. I talked to many of the owners and they have all collected pieces from all over the world but also incorporated Mexican designers. I could go back to Mexico City just for the vintage stores. Let me know in the comment section below if you want me to make a separate episode for this because I have so many vintage stores to show you. But two of my favorites were Roma Vintage and Era Vintage. Both had an incredible selection and the owners were so welcoming. We're getting close to the end and number 9 on the list is simply to take advantage of all the beautiful parks this city has to offer. The most famous one is Bosque de Chapultepec. Now it's filming! <laughs> one of the things you can do here in Mexico City is to visit the castle. But make sure you come when it's open because it actually closes at 5 so we were a little too late today. There's a museum inside, there's tons of beautiful places to take photos. That was our plan. But traffic in Mexico City is crazy. Opening hours vary all the time, so make sure you check the opening hours and enjoy the park. But yeah, this park is often compared to Central Park in New York and it's so much to see here. You can easily spend hours here and I'm bummed we miss out on the castle because it's supposed to be incredible. On the weekend, you can also rent boats on the water, which looks super fun. There's tons of street vendors, so you definitely won't be walking around hot. Lastly on the list is number 10, visit Mercado de Artesanías. There's tons of markets to visit, but this was the most recommended to me. It's pretty popular and you will run into other tourists, but it was not overwhelming. It's a market with endless vendors selling traditional handcrafts and folk art. It's colorful and you'll often see the craftsmen working on jewelry, glass boxes or beading. I got some great gifts for my friends and family that I brought home to New York. As I've been saying throughout this episode, this city is enormous, so the list of things to do could be endless, but I wanted to quickly include a few more honorable mentions I wanted to do but that I didn't have time for. Number 11 is Visit Torre de Latino. This is one of the most important landmarks in the city. It survived one of the largest earthquakes Mexico City had, and the tickets to enter are really affordable. Number 12 is Mezcal Tasting. It's huge all over Mexico. Get Your Guide offered a few different tours, but I didn't have time in Mexico City, but we did one in Oaxaca City and we loved it. Number 13 would be to do a Day of the Dead tour. The history is so interesting. I can only hope to one day celebrate the Day of the Dead in Mexico. Number 14 would be a food tour. As I said, there are endless amounts of street vendors, restaurants and markets here that can serve you culinary experiences you can only dream of. So that wraps up some of the best things you can do in this massive city. Before you go, I wanted to quickly give you some travel tips and tricks that you can use to make your trip better and safer. Firstly, safety. The main question I got asked when I was here alone was, is Mexico City safe for solo female travelers? And to keep it simple, like any other big city with over 20 million people, there will always be dangerous neighborhoods and sketchy people. But as long as you use common sense and stay in safe areas like Roma Norte and Condesa, you should be good. Mexico has some of the most welcoming and generous people and Mexico City is no different. I never felt scared there, but I also took Uber everywhere and I never walked outside when it was dark. 
I actually have a few girlfriends who live alone in Mexico City and they love it. The main takeaway I got after talking to the locals and my friends there was basically Mexico City is still dangerous and there are tons of neighborhoods you should not visit even during the day. There's still a lot of corruption too, so always keep cash on you in case you get stopped on the street. And lastly, stick to Uber. It's affordable and you can share your location with a friend and regular taxis are not as safe. In fact, my local friends told me to never use them. But never let a bad reputation of a city scare you to not visit. Just go and explore it for yourself. Most cities will welcome you with open arms if you enter with an open mind. Mexico will forever be one of my favorite countries and I'm so happy to finally have visited Mexico City. Make sure to check out the other episodes from my Mexico travel series and let me know in the description below what you thought about today's episode. Have you been to Mexico City or is fear holding you back? Also, make sure to leave your top Mexico City recommendations in the comment section below so we can elevate everyone's trip to this bustling city. Thank you so much for watching today's episode and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. And hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video, it really helps my channel, it tells YouTube to share with more like-minded people. Thank you so much again and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye!